G'day, I'm James and welcome to the fourth video on the story of quadratics. In fact, today we'll finish up the story of the algebra of quadratics and we'll move on to the graphing next. But there are various bits and pieces of the algebra that we can still talk about that some curricula do talk about and some other curricula don't. So there might be things here that are relevant and not relevant, but it's all good stuff so it's worth looking at right now. In fact, today we'll do the beauty and the thinking behind something called the factor theorem. We'll talk about the roots of a quadratic and the algebra of the roots. And we'll talk about difference formulas, like the difference of two squares, which we did last time. We'll push that a little bit further today. So various algebraic topics coming together for this final, final video on the algebra of quadratics. And next will be the graphing. All right, but to start us off, here's a puzzle. I've drawn some rectangles here. In fact, I've drawn a three by six rectangle and a four by four rectangle, also known as a square. They have integer side lengths, so I kept everything integers, just to be nice. But these rectangles have a very nice property. If I look at the area of this three by six rectangle, the area is three times six is 18 units squared. And the perimeter is three plus six, three plus six is also of value 18. In this case, it's 18 units. So units squared in units, however, the numerical value of the area equals the numerical value of the perimeter both 18. In fact, the 4 by 4 square has the same property because the area of this thing is 4 times 4 is 16 units squared. And the perimeter is 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, 16 units. The area and the perimeter have the same numerical value. So here's my puzzle for you. Find me all, all the rectangles of integer side lengths A and B such the area and the perimeter of these rectangles have the same numerical value. Keep everything integers, I want this to be an integer problem. Can you find me more examples of such rectangles? In fact, find me all the examples. Go for it. Okay, did you try that puzzle? Because I'm about to actually solve it myself. Because the algebra we need to do there is actually the algebra we need for the day. So if you want to try the puzzle, pause now, find me more rectangles with integer side lengths whose area and perimeters have the same value. Right, pause now, because now I'm going to give the answer away. Here's how I'm going to do it. So I want a rectangle with integer A, integer B for its side lengths, such that the perimeter, which is what? Two A's and two B's, two A plus two B, and the area, which is A times B, A, B, have the same value. So I need two integers A and B such that 2a plus 2b equals ab. I need to find integers which make that equation a true statement about numbers. All right, so let me, let me play with that equation. In fact, let me try to solve for one of the variables. I'll, I'll solve for b and get that in terms of a, and we'll see the structure of that equation, because that structure will tell us something. Uh, so right now, I've got a 2b on the left and an ab on the right. So there's some b's on the left and right. Let me subtract 2b from both sides. So I'll have ab take away 2b. A, B, take away 2B would be 2A. So I guess I just switched to the, the equality around as well. I hope that's okay. Um, so I've really got what? A, B minus 2B. So I've got A minus 2B is 2A, which means I've got B all by itself must be 2A over A minus 2, which looks a bit worrisome because I wanted integers. I wanted B to be an integer. It looks like B is about to be a fraction. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so now I'm going to put on a technique here called wishful thinking. Wouldn't it be lovely if this numerator was a multiple of the denominator? Because then the denominator would cancel out, and I'd be left with just a numerator, namely an integer, I presume. Okay, very strange wishful thinking. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to make the numerator be a multiple of the denominator. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm just going to make it happen. But there'll be consequences. So let's see what I mean by that. So give myself a bit more space. Maybe we don't need the rectangle anymore. So right now, I've got b is 2 times something. It's 2 times a over a minus 2. So I see the numerator is definitely a multiple of a. I want it to be a multiple of a minus 2. So I'm going to be sneaky and bad. I'm going to just make it a multiple of a minus 2. But I've just changed the question. This is 2a technically minus 4. So to counteract what I did, I better add a 4 as well. Yeah? So now my numerator is still the same, it's still 2a, but now I see at least part of it, at least part of it's a multiple of a minus 2. Because now I can cancel this out and see that b is 2, a nice whole number, but my consequences are I'm still left with a little fractional part. Still a little fraction. All right, that was fast and sneaky, but I like it. I like it because now I can look at the structure 
and see something. If I want b to be an integer, then I want, okay, 2 is an integer, fine, plus a fraction. I need a minus 2 to be a factor of 4, so that part's an integer. There are only three factors of 4. 1, 2, and 4. So either a minus 2 is 1, that makes that an integer, or a minus 2 is 2, that makes that an integer, or a minus 2 is 4, that makes that an integer. They're the only possibilities. So let's do it, let's do it. If a minus 2 is 1, then that tells you what, that a is 3, okay, but then more important, b is going to be 2 plus 4 divided by 1, uh, which is 4, so b is 6. Oh, that is the example we had first off, a 3 by 6 rectangle. Bingo, that's fitting the equation. Perimeter and area have the same value, and I've got integers. Other possibility, so if a minus 2 being factor 1, maybe a minus 2 is the factor 2. a minus 2 is 2, in which case it tells me a is 4, and b would then be 2 plus 4 divided by 2, which is 2, which is 4. Oh, that's the other example we had, a 4 by 4 square, area and perimeter the same numerical value. Looking good. But there's now a third option, so maybe we're about to find a third example finally. That is when the factor a minus 2 is not 1, well not 1, it's not 2, but it's actually the other factor of 4, which is 4. a minus 2 is 4. In that case, I get that a is 6, and b would be 2 plus 4 divided by 4, 2 plus 1 is 3. Oh, in this case, I'll get the 6 by 3 rectangle, which you could say is a brand new example but maybe you wouldn't say it's a brand new example because actually it's just this one turned 90 degrees. That's it, that's it. We've solved our puzzle. We've now proved basically these are the only two integer rectangles with a property that area and perimeter have the same numerical value. But the lovely thing here was this algebraic technique. I wanted to see my numerator to be a multiple of the denominator, but then there was some error. But that turned out to be very, very handy. And that's what we're going to do next with our quadratic equations. But before I go, here's my next puzzle for you. Here's my next puzzle for you. Instead of doing rectangles, integer rectangles, look at this integer right triangle. There's 5 by 12 by 13. Its area is half the base, which is 12, times height. So half times 12 times height, half, six, uh, half 12 is 6 times 5 is 30. Area is 30. And look, perimeter. 5 plus 12 is 17, plus 13 is 30. There is an integer right triangle with the property that area and perimeter have the same numerical value. So here's my real puzzle for you. Find me all the integer right triangles with the property that area and perimeter have the same numerical value. There's actually more, more this time. Go for it. Find them all. And maybe try the algebra trick we did then. Oh, good stuff. Go for it.